What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2020 Nissan Altima all-wheel drive. Huge thanks to Nissan for providing me here with the restyled Altima to review for you guys today. So about the new Altima here, well, it was revealed last year and uh, I think it's a really nice design. And uh, you know, I think it borrows some aspects from the Maxima, but has a distinct look of its own. I like the V-Motion grille in the front, the sleeker headlamps, and it's conservative, but still attractive. Uh, you know, I don't think it really stands out, uh, especially with some of the newer, more polarizing designs we have these days on family sedans, but I think it still does look very good. You know, you have these 19 inch wheels here on the platinum version that this is. Also other little things, you see the floating C pillar treatment, which is something Nissan's been doing on just about every one of their new vehicles. And I think that's a, a cool little touch. Again, something different from the others. Out back, you have some simple but attractive tail lamps. And uh, the whole overall shape of the vehicle just looks so much leaner and low and just uh, slinky, I guess, than the old Altima, which was a little more bulbous and chunky looking. This is really a little more athletic and toned up. And uh, overall, I think it's a really good look. Alright, so the interior of the Altima here. So, it's a nice improvement over the previous gen Altima and is pretty competitive with a lot of the others in this segment, um, but does have a few shortcomings. And uh, anyway, though, first thing, one thing that is definitely not a shortcoming are these seats. Fantastic zero gravity seats that Nissan does. They are some of the most comfortable seats in the segment. I think maybe the brand new Subaru Legacy might top it just barely, but these are really at the top of the class as far as seat comfort. I mean, you know, for a midsize sedan, they have average bolstering and would hold you in place pretty well uh, you know decent uh, thigh support and torso support but just super comfortable especially here these ones are leather and perforated here on this platinum trim and they're also heated but they still are not ventilated even on this top platinum trim which is a little bit of a surprise since some of the others are offering cold seats these days um, so that is one little shortcoming uh, you see here with the seats also the heating of the seats is only two mode instead of a three mode uh, setting you usually see on other vehicles so they actually don't get quite as hot as other uh, heated seats too which I've been noticing here in this wintry week that I've been driving it um, so comfortable but uh, not feature packed like some of the others out there next is the steering wheel here which is really great it has a really nice nine and three grip you get a really good grip on the wheel great ten and two notches I like the flat bottom the design of it's nice it's nicely leather wrapped although the leather doesn't feel super expensive a little bit of a cheaper feeling leather unfortunately compared to some of the competitors again um, but I do like the design of it you know with this uh, plastic plastic trim that looks like metal but it's very plasticky but uh, just a few buttons here on it but overall you know just a good uh, wheel to use gauges are pretty clear and uh, pretty simple here for the Altima so you have the standard analog dials and in the middle here on these higher trims you have this nice large digital color display in the middle there and on this main screen uh, you can see it's a little bit busy that is one thing um, that I've noticed here uh, but thankfully you can scroll through different settings uh, to make it more simple if you'd like uh, but I did get used to the busy your screen there you know with the compass and the audios and the uh, digital speed readout plus your speed limit and clock and temperature all that stuff being right there uh, it's a little much for some people maybe but I personally don't mind it coming over to the center of the dashboard you have uh, this nice large 8 inch touchscreen display and I will say the graphics and stuff don't seem quite as high quality and impressive as some of the competitors but I think it's right in line with most I like that it's nice and easy the menus are very simple very straightforward to use you have a volume and a tune knob which is more than you can say for some of the competitors just a few button shortcuts down beneath it and uh, so really a great screen setup the only thing I'll say in regards to the screen is that the backup camera and this one has this bird's eye 360 camera which is nice to have in theory but the cameras are so low resolution compared to all the other cameras out there these days these cameras just look like they're at least five years old as far as the quality it's really bad and especially at night especially if the weather's not perfect they are almost unusable uh, really low camera quality so I really Really wish they would improve that another thing I wish they would improve coming down uh, is this fake wood trim it's basically just plasticky and looks like they printed out a wood pattern uh, like from your normal computer printer and just like put it into the trim there it looks extremely fake and obviously it's just very hard glossy plastic and so it doesn't do a very convincing job here in this top trim that it's premium especially with stuff like the Honda Accord having much higher quality wood trim real wood trim in it and Mazda having very high quality materials in their interiors this um, doesn't look high quality doesn't feel high quality it just um, gives this vehicle a little bit of a cheap feeling, especially considering that this one as tested is about $37,000. So it's on the upper end of the price spectrum 
for this class of vehicle as well and it certainly is not best in class interior uh, for that money coming down you also have you know just nice simple climate controls only a few buttons here and i do like the two big knobs but unfortunately it is plastic they're like kind of metal plated then do a uh subpar imitation of metal but they did try um but considering you have stuff like mazda and even honda that have very clicky knobs here that actually feel like real metal and i believe are real metal these ones just again are lower uh, down compared to the competitors and um you know does not compete with the best out there from the mid-size sedan segment but it is nicer than some others like for example the toyota camry has just straight up plastic knobs they don't even try to do anything metal like so this i would say is a little bit nicer than that but um like i said still mid-pack at best moving on to sword space here beneath those climate controls you'll see a usb-c jack a usb jack auxiliary jack and also a power outlet so great to have all those out there and also this nice rubberized bin beneath it uh, which can fit you know most large smartphones with ease you'll also see two cup holders coming behind here and this, the cup holders are where you're, the only place you're going to see the ambient lighting, that and the footwell. Nissan does horrible ambient lighting where it's just cup holder and footwell lighting and that's it. So certainly not worth the $700 that, that they charge for that upgrade because um, the ambient lighting doesn't even match the other lighting. Like you do have some lighting here around the center cubby, but that's a different color. So the whole thing just doesn't look very good. So I would definitely skip the ambient lighting option. Other things, you have map pockets in the doors, which are pretty large and have a good bottle holder. So that's great. Coming over to the center again, you have the center armrest, which um, is actually nice and softly padded. You open that up and you have a average size space here. It does have a little removable tray on the top and your on off uh, color button there for the uh, ambient lighting. So that's all you have in there. No additional hookups or anything, but overall, you know, good amount of space. So uh, nothing really to complain about there. And one other compliment I do want to give to the Ultima here is that you do have a padded knee area, which is something that Mazda offers and I think Honda, and that's about it. So that is a little more premium feeling than some of the others. So that is one area where they did do better. Um, I don't know if that's on all trims, but at least here on the Platinum one, you do have the padding. And even like the brand new 2020 Sonata doesn't have padding on its top trim. So um, I would say this interior, the materials and stuff probably feel a little bit better than the Hyundai's. Uh, but then, you know, you do have like the tops of the doors are padded and feel a little more premium than the Hyundai and stuff. Top of the dashboard's also padded a little bit. And so I think they really improved the interior materials here in many areas. Just, you know, a few sore spots, like I said, with the trim and and a few other little details but overall this interior does feel much more plush than the old Altima and actually is a little more plush than some of the competitors as well. Backseat space in the Altima here is very nice and spacious uh, with this larger Altima. You do have a good amount of space. So I'm five foot nine, I'm sitting behind myself. I easily have about five inches or so of legroom to spare. So right in line with the Accord and uh, you know some of those larger back seats in this segment. And so they did a great job as far as rear seat space goes. They're also very soft, comfortable back seats as well, just like the fronts. You'll see also a full down center armrest, the two cup holders built into it. There's also bottle holders in the doors. And when you look forward, you'll see two air vents as well as another USB jack and another USB-C jack. So good to have the hookups, plenty of room and lots of comfort. There's also several inches of headroom to spare. Again, me even being 5'9". And so overall, they did a really great job on the back seat here in the Altima. Trunk space in the Altima is also very good. It's a nice wide and long space, right in line with, again, most of the competitors. There isn't any kind of storage under the floor or anything like that, just, you know, your spare tire there, which is nice that they've included that. But, you know, some others in this segment do try and do a little bit of a cubby or something Thing underneath the floor there this has none of that uh, but still good to have just a nice ruby trunk all right so start and go for a drive nissan here has the same key they've been using for a good while now which is uh just it looks like they're metal buttons but they're actually pretty plasticky and don't feel very high quality uh, but it is a small key so i'll give them that i'm glad that they kept it nice and small but i wouldn't mind a newer nissan key here that's a little bit nicer but of course it's keyless access keyless entry and push button start so just leave the key in your pocket hit the engine start button here and it starts right up all right, so sitting off here in the 2020 Nissan Altima. So first things you notice here. So I think the first thing that I'm noticing is you have nice light steering. It's not super sporty. So if you're an enthusiast, you might not love the way that it feels. But I think for the average family sedan buyer, this is going to feel a little less sporty uh, than some of the others, which I think a lot of people will appreciate that it's just, it doesn't take a ton of muscle to move it. It's a more comfortable and relaxed feel. And I think the Ultima overall 
is more of a mainstream comfortable vehicle to drive you know the seats are super comfortable like I mentioned earlier uh, the steering's nice and light everything is very easy in the Altima and I think that people are going to appreciate that on a daily drive if you just you don't want something sporty you just want something comfortable to commute in I think this will fit that very well you also have pretty sharp throttle response uh, it is connected to a CVT which I'll talk more about in a second but you know pretty responsive as far as all that goes visibility in the Altima is a mixed bag so you have fairly good view forward uh, but you do have an a-pillar with the mirror combined uh, right there at the a-pillar and a lot of other vehicles these days are moving it onto the doors away from the a-pillar you also have this little blind spot indicator right here in the a-pillar so that does make that a little chunkier than it should be otherwise view forward is good though uh, view out of the back is also a little problematic though because you'll see the third brake light comes up there in the bottom and the way that the whole uh, I guess rear window is angled you actually um, don't have a great view of the cars behind you like going down the highway and stuff um, because of that third brake light and stuff. It, it's not a great view out of the back there. One thing that I noticed immediately is how much Nissan's improved their CVT transmission. So uh, in the past, they've been very rubber bandy feeling and it just felt like you were freewheeling half the time until it started, uh, you know, adjusting the pulleys there in that CVT in order to, uh, you know, give you additional thrust forward. This actually has normal shift points for the CVT. And so most of the time it acts mostly like a normal auto automatic transmission so uh, in the past I really love to hate on CVTs and there are still some others that aren't great but I've warmed up to Nissan CVTs and these newest ones I think they've really improved them and it's it's much more normal feeling and I appreciate that while still giving you the efficiency of the CVT so not a big deal with the CVT at least with this engine because um, I did do the VC turbo motor I drove one of those last year and that it felt a little more rubber bandy I think with this engine not having the turbo it uh, kind of helps give it a more natural feeling here and the CVT uh, you know can kind of just have those normal shift points and be smooth so Actually, you know, just driving around at normal speeds here, um, the Altima is uh, just a very relaxed thing to drive. Okay, let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does for power. There's no sport mode or anything, so you just uh, put your foot to the floor and here we go. Okay, so yeah, nice response. And it does have shift points there, so it does feel pretty normal, which is great. Um, so the Altima, it actually felt fairly punchy for what it is. So it's only running a naturally aspirated two and a half liter four cylinder engine. It does 182 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. It is zero to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds, according to Motor Trend, that's what they got. And uh, that's for the all wheel drive version here. So you have no wheel spin or anything. Not that the front wheel drive version was going to be spinning its tires a bunch with only 180 some horsepower. Uh, but you know, good to have the all wheel drive to give you that grip. And you do make a few less horsepower than you would you get with the front wheel drive version and that's because they had to reroute the exhaust system to be a little less efficient to go around all the uh, stuff for the all-wheel drive system and that rear um, you know drive shaft and all that kind of stuff so that's why you have a few less horsepower because of rerouting the exhaust system but honestly again for a family sedan it's enough power and there hasn't I've already been driving this vehicle for over 100 miles there hasn't been a single time where I've really been annoyed at the lack of power um, there are, have been a couple of times where the calibration of the automatic makes me think the engine has less power and that's just basically because the CVT is tuned for the best fuel efficiency possible I think and so um, although everything's pretty responsive and if you get aggressive with it it will respond well um, but whenever you're just trying to putt along there have been some times where it bogs down the engine and won't go like above 2,000 rpms for a couple of beats until it finally is like all right fine but it's it's always uh, trying to kind of hypermile you a bit and and um, that's fine. It just means that, you know, the engine sometimes doesn't feel quite as eager as it should. And again, that's just something, you know, you have to just be a little more aggressive with your throttle inputs if you really want to get a downshift out of it. You don't have any kind of paddle shifters or anything here in this version of the Altima. If you go for some of the other versions, I believe you do get it like the SR trim, at least with the turbo motor. Um, but nothing uh, paddle shifting here. And the, all you have as far as the shiftability on the transmission, there's this little negative button here. So you can, um, you know, put it down into the sport 
sport transmission mode and then that will you know give you a little bit of a sportier response but that's all you really get as far as that goes um, if there isn't any kind of way to actually manually shift this uh, on your own so you just have to put your foot to the floor and have it figure itself out which I think again most casual buyers are intimidated by paddle shifters they don't want to be bothered with that kind of stuff and so I think this is probably the right approach for that demographic but we're coming up some corners here see how the handling is the roads are still a little bit damp here and we are below freezing so I'm not going to be uh, pushing it too much here but uh, you know I will say that it handles itself very well much much better than the old Altima very you know flat handling again I haven't had too many chances to push it here really but you got these 235 wide all season hand cooked tires that do a good job of giving you plenty of grip and with the all-wheel drive system you're not going to really have any issues it can send about 50% of the power to the rear if necessary uh, otherwise you know it does usually function as a front wheel drive vehicle for the most part uh, but it does a really good job uh, with handling. I don't really have any complaints again. Now, it's not best in class. I think the Honda Accord still handles better. Um, I think the Mazda 6 is a little more refined, um, although it does feel a little heavier. This does feel nice and light. These only weigh uh, about 3,400 pounds here, even with the all-wheel drive, which is very impressive. So they did a good job keeping the weight down on this. And so because of that, you know, you have uh, pretty agile handling. I think it actually feels a little more agile than the Toyota Camry actually so I think the Camry has a little bit of a flatter ride this is uh, tuned to be a little bit more comfort oriented but I think it's a little um, more effortless in its handling than what you get uh, with the Camry uh, but I think again Accord is still the top of the of the pack uh, I think this actually does handle a little bit better than the 2020 Sonata which has overly heavy steering and feels a little bulkier it's you feel like you're sitting up a little higher in the Sonata a little bit of a bigger vehicle um, this has a little bit more of a leaner feel to it and so in corners um, I think this is probably towards the top of the pack as far as handling again a cord is better but this is close to the top and uh, does feel a little bit better than some of the others other things though here while we're driving now this road is a little bit rougher um, but there is still some road noise so I think like the Mazda 6 is a little more uh, refined with its interior but I think it, otherwise this is pretty average for the segment and you know pretty similar to many of the others so uh, don't really don't really think I can complain too much about the interior noise I will say there's one or two rattles coming from um, like the B pillar area there I heard a rattle uh, and some others in the and other reviews have complained about wind noise I haven't experienced any ab above average wind noise personally um, and I've actually been driving this vehicle for an entire week already so that hasn't been something that stood out to me now we're on some smoother roads here and now it's nice and quiet and refined so it really comes down to what kind of roads you're on because it is all just road noise not really any extra wind noise or anything like that the only other little refinement issue that i did notice though is that this engine has more vibration than you usually get with basically anything in a modern car i don't know uh, sometimes it's because of the cvt where the engine just bogs down a little bit so you get you get some vibrations through the cabin here. But what I really notice is whenever you're stopped, like at a red light or something where the car is in gear and you have your foot on the brake, um, there's vibrations. It just, the whole vehicle kind of vibrates a little bit more than most other gas powered vehicles. And so um, it was really odd. You know, I mean, it would be so much that would actually vibrate the steering wheel a little bit and the seat. So I'm not sure. And it just seems like there's not quite as much refinement there. I don't know if it's a, a padding issue or what it is that it comes down to but I just noticed more vibrations. It was almost diesel-like with how many vibrations I was feeling here in the cabin. Um, so that was one thing I was a little bit surprised by. But otherwise, uh, the driving experience here in the Altima is all very good. Uh, the only other thing, you know, this is the all-wheel drive version. That's one big thing. I'm sure it's a big question for people is how's the all-wheel drive system? And um, I didn't get to drive it in snow or anything. The most I did was drive it in some heavy rain. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't have any issues. There was never any slippage or any time where there was a thinking period. You know, even going up slippery hills in the rain and stuff, there was never any any kind of slippage or anything. Um, it always, if it did transfer power, it did it seamlessly and I didn't notice it. And there was never any loss of power or any kind of cutting back or anything. It was all very well done, so much so that I didn't even notice it working. So that was good. So I'm impressed with the all-wheel drive system so far. Of course, I would have to drive it in the snow to really get a better feel. 
but so far I'm impressed with the all-wheel drive system and no complaints there. But where I do have a decent amount of complaints is with the safety tech here in the Altima. So an interesting thing is that unlike other car companies which are making all their safety stuff standard for the most part, aside from maybe one or two features sometimes, uh, with Nissan on the base trims, you still have to pay for the automatic emergency braking and stuff like that. So um, you don't have to have all the safety tech, at least in the lower trims. But here in the Platinum, it all comes standard and uh, it still um, needs some work. And there's some stuff that they just don't do as well as some other companies. First off, the blind spot monitoring. Um, some people like the fact that it's not in the mirror and that it's on the A-pillar here. I personally don't because I'm always looking in my mirror when I'm checking for lane changes. And so having to look at something else and not my mirror to know whether or not it's safe to you know, change lanes without looking over my shoulder, that's not an ideal setup. I prefer the ones in the mirrors. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing is the blind spot monitoring just straight up doesn't work at low speeds. And so whenever I was sitting in some stop and go traffic, um, just rolling at you know, five to 10 miles per hour, there was cars in my blind spot and the blind spot monitor was not lit and that's insane to me because any other vehicle that will light up and that's something you want to know that you can count on that and so if there's you know there was times where I, I just I never trusted it because I'd be rolling and I look over my shoulder to double check because I still always do and there's a car there and the blind spot monitor was not lit up so that was actually shocking to me that it doesn't work at low speed. So if you're in traffic and stuff, definitely make sure you're still looking over your shoulder because that won't always work. Um, so that's a little disconcerting. Other things, um, so I was trying out the Pro Pilot Assist, which is the optional steering assist uh, adaptive cruise system that Nissan has here. You know, it's good as far as adaptive cruise control systems go, you know, for the normal stuff. It will go all the way down to a stop and uh, resume and stuff flawlessly. So it does all that good. I will say that it's not as smooth as some of the others in the segment and it's still even if with its closest following distance setting still was very lax with its following distance. It never got too close but there was a lot of times where it was way more than um, you know one car length or whatever that it usually does for the shortest following distance and so there was many times when I was sitting in traffic you know rolling at again 10 or 15 miles per hour where the cars ahead would accelerate my car would not accelerate as quickly and someone would cut it in front of me because I left this huge gap. And um, then it was again not smooth with the braking even at low speeds so I think it was kind of throwing off cars behind me. It still just, it still drives like a nervous 16 year old um, that has no driving experience. And so uh, it's just not very intelligent, you know, it can only see the car in front of you. It doesn't really, per, you know, predict what's going on with the cars beyond that first car. And so, you know, me as a human driver, I can see, okay, the guy three cars up started hitting his brakes these guys will probably start slowing down and I would preemptively start slowing down the car can't see that or at least these cars Nissan uh, can't see that so it only reacts to that first car that it's sensing with the radar and so you know something that I would have reacted to three to five seconds sooner this then is like oh crap I gotta hurry up and slow on slow on the brakes and you know uh, try and react to this and so it's all just a little dim-witted for me still so I personally would definitely not pay extra for this stuff and I mean adaptive cruise is great when you're out on the open highway and there's not as much traffic, that's where Adaptive Cruise still shines. But as far as, you know, all these companies trying to market it as great in stop and go traffic and relieving your, you know, uh, traffic jam uh, annoyances, I, I think it still causes more problems than it solves. And so not in love, at least with Nissan's application. There's a few others that are a little bit better. I'm not in love with any of them, honestly. Uh, but I think that Nissan's isn't quite as smooth as some of the others. And then moving on from the Adaptive Cruise thing, uh, Another thing that uh, I don't like about this Pro Pilot Assist system is the lane departure warning is very aggressive and I don't even get onto the line. I don't even get, I feel like sometimes I don't even get close to the line and it automatically like sees my path and is worried that I'm going to go close to the line and immediately starts giving me alerts and I got way more lane departure alerts in this vehicle than any other vehicle I think I've reviewed this year. It's just been uh, you know, very uh, active noisy system the whole time and unfortunately with some other systems you can actually fine tune it to have a less aggressive setting if you'd like or a more aggressive setting. This one is just an on or off switch. So you either have lane departure warning or you don't. And you have the lane departure mitigation where it'll actually have steering assist or no. You have it's either everything or nothing with Nissan the way they have the settings in here. So um, it's not like you can tone it down or something. It's just that if it annoys you as much as it does with me, you just simply don't have that feature that you paid for. Um, if you know it's so that's one thing that I'm also not 
Monmouth, I think that could certainly use some improvement too. As far as fuel economy goes here in the Altima, it is, uh, you know, pretty good, pretty mid-pack. For an all-wheel drive vehicle, it is pretty decent though. It gets uh, rated at 25 in the city, 35 on the highway, and 29 combined. I did do about half of my driving was highway, or close to half, and I've still only managed to get about 25 mpg. Um, it's 24.8, but I did do a decent amount of idling. Uh, before that, it was 25.1. So, um, you know, not a great fuel economy number. That's, again, me just barely getting that city number, basically. And I did do an almost combined 50-50 split. So, um, a little bit lower than what I would expect, but, uh, you know, I guess it's not horrible. And if you were doing more highway driving and stuff and not as much stop and go like I was doing, you'd get a little bit of a better rating. But just keep in mind that that 29 combined might not be what you see in the real world. You might be getting more like 25 in the real world. Uh, but for all-wheel drive, I think that's pretty par for the course. You don't really have a whole lot of options all-wheel drive. Uh, mid-sized family sedans are pretty rare. You, know, you have this, you have the Subaru Legacy, and now just recently Toyota announced the all-wheel drive Camry coming in the middle of 2020. So those are your three options in this segment, honestly. So if you want the all-wheel drive, then, you know, this is one of the few games in town. You know, that's the last thing I want to mention here is the pricing here of the Altima. So basically it, it starts right around $25,000 for a base front-wheel drive one, and then it's about $1,500 more for the all-wheel drive if you want that. And so front-wheel drive versus front-wheel drive, um, this is very competitive with the rest. It's about, I think, $200 less than an Accord, maybe $200 more than a Camry. It's very competitive with all the others, so not even worth talking about that difference. And obviously the all-wheel drive is something that most of those don't offer. There's no pricing released yet as of the time of me filming this for the all-wheel drive Camry. So I can't really compare it to that perfectly either. Um, but I will say the Subaru Legacy, which is obviously standard with all-wheel drive, starts about $1,500 less than even the front-wheel drive Altima. And then whenever you consider how much Nissan charges for the all-wheel drive here on the Altima, comparing this to a base Legacy, this is almost $3,000 more expensive. And so at a $3,000 price premium, especially with the all-new 2020 Legacy, which is very impressive as well, a very plush, soft, comfortable interior, also has a CVT, very similar power, um, and is also a good bit cheaper considering there's, um, you know, this one as tested this Altima, by the way, is about $37,000 for this Platinum trim, and you still don't have cold seats or anything like that. And for 37 grand, you could pick up a Legacy with the Turbo XT motor that also has cooled seats, um, has the safety tech as standard in the Subarus and everything. You don't have to pay extra for that. Um, I feel like that's the better value. And so, you know, the materials in here aren't quite as nice, I think, as the brand new Subarus. And Subarus really came out swinging with the new Legacy. And I think this just, I don't see the value there. But I've had this similar complaint with other Nissans that I've reviewed recently, uh, where they're all a little too pricey MSRP versus MSRP compared to their com competition. But then whenever you factor in uh, the dealer incentives that you often get on Nissans, which are usually a little more generous than some of the other manufacturers, that's what gets these into, into a competitive pricing uh, realm. But that's the only way the Altima kind of gets a decent value proposition is with dealer discounts, which is kind of a shame because um, they did do some very good things. Like I said, I love the driving dynamics here in the Altima. Um, I think they did a great job with everything. I really like so much of the interior here, even though it does have a few shortcomings. It is such a comfortable place to drive and cruise around in. I am glad that Nissan's continuing with the Altima and continuing on to invest in sedans, even though many other companies are abandoning sedans. So hopefully that uh, benefits Nissan in the long run. But, um, you know, as far as this one goes, it's competitive. Uh, I do like it, but uh, definitely not best in class in any way, uh, but still a very uh, good offering and uh, worth checking out if you're in the market for an all-wheel drive family sedan here. So anyway, huge thanks to Nissan for providing me with the new Altima here to review for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on the 2020 Altima in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.